when you become born again, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I know many of you know it. Therefore, he says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, that man is a new... Come on. He's a new what? And he says, old things are passed away. Let's talk about old things here. Let's talk about old things. Now, let's have a conversation. Let's have an honest conversation. Huh? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All. All. Tell your neighbor, all. Now, let's understand this. Imagine you go to a doctor. And I remember it happened to me once. I was, I was working in a bank, so they get us to this uh, space where they will have to ask our you know, health status and stuff like that, our family history and blood history. So this uh, interesting doctor asks me, um, do you have histories of hypertension and heart disease and diabetes in your family? Huh? I told him no. Now, not because I've not seen people hypertensive in my family, but if any man Oh, come on now. Don't scare me. If any man be in Christ Jesus, the Bible says he is a new creature. I have renewed my mind. I carry no consciousness. He says, for the old things are passed away. All things. That means you don't need to carry diabetes because your mother carried it. That was the old man. You don't need to carry heart disease because your father carried it. That was the... Are you, are you following me? You don't need to. You don't need to. You, that's what the Bible says. It's not me. All things are passed away. And all things are become. So they asked me. And of course I knew a few who were sick. I told him no. He says you must have a lucky family. He says of course James, Peter and John. All of these are my family members. <laughs> So he asked me, says, so your family members are? I said, yeah. And I meant it because when I went through to see this new creature experience, Paul never suffered from hypertension. Of course, of course, I don't read it. Peter never had diabetes. I'm like, okay. Oh, that you carry a gene of cancer. Listen, it will end with you. It will end with you. It has to be buried with the old man. This is how we fight. And you say, no, I refuse this. I refuse this. Why? Because it does not agree with the new creation in Christ. Is somebody following what I'm saying? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. I'm talking to my African brothers who still are dealing with generational curses. Oh, and you guys have those issues. You're still dealing with your great-grandfather's, auntie's grandfather's demon spirit, which is chasing your third generation or grandfather. And now it is looking for you. You left it somewhere in Zimbabwe. It can't pursue. Somebody shout fire. fire. If any man be in Christ Jesus, that man is a new creation. All things are passed away. And all things are become new. And what does the next line say? And all things are of God. Which has reconciled us back to himself. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. All things are of God. My kidneys are of God. My liver is of God. My heart is of God. My intestines are of God. My eyes are of God. My visions are of God. My dreams are of God. My marriage is of all things are of God. Verses 18. Verses 18, you're 19. All things are of God. Are we preaching the truth here? Do you know what it's like for 
to repeat this into the hearts of men until they all can believe it. Do you know how dangerous you'd look or become actually? When you know that you know that now all things are of God. The devil has no legal right to put in me what Jesus carried away. He has no legal right. You can give it to him. But he has no right. He might try you. He might check you. You might feel the pains. The doctors might give it names. But he has no legal right to put on you what Jesus carried on the cross. Are you following me, child of God? All things are of God. Even if we preach this for a whole year and people understood it, it's enough to span revival. Just people understanding this. All things are of God. All things are of God. That means nothing around you fails. Nothing around you dies. Are you following what I'm saying? Nothing around you fall, fails. Nothing around you dies. Everything around you is life. Why? Because all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. And listen, and has given to us the ministry. This is the ministry of the New Testament church of reconciliation. That our ministry is to make sure that men are reconciled with God. That no preacher should preach anything that separates man from God. So how many sermons do you sit in and they separate you from God? You're far. God is this side. You're going to die. God hates you. He is angry with you. You understand? He said the ministry of reconciliation is to take a man to that place to understand that when salvation comes, you're reconciled. Then we teach you to live the life of a reconciled being. That's the gospel. But do you know how many people are preaching? Literally, literally. Preaching literally a separation of man from God. And do you know the danger? Oh no, you, you thought I was going to say the danger of preaching that. No. Let me talk about the danger of a man who knows that they're one with God. Oh, you didn't get this, did you? No, you preach it in your sermons. You literally worship yourselves from God. It's in your songs. Literally. Because the Bible says that any man being Christ, Jesus, he's a new creature. The Bible says he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Do you agree? Come on, answer me. Do you know that the Bible says that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord? You're reconciled with God. You're one with God. So then why would a person sing something like, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Now this Jesus, now I know that it's a religious person right there just got mad at me. They're like, why are you attacking our song? My grandfather sang it. My great-grandfather. One day I sang that song and I swear I was filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> While, listen. All others thou art calling. Uh -huh. Do not pass me by. And I become so good. Say. I always love to sing it. Savior. I know it's wrong, but it's beautiful. <laughs> My. Now, listen. Listen. The Bible says, in him you live. In him you move. And in him you have your own being. The Bible says that you've been reconciled with God. The Bible says Christ dwells in your heart through faith. That means... Christ will never leave you. He said with his own words, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So then why do you, why do you create visitations? Yet I said I will never leave you. He said I will never leave you nor forsake you. In me you have your being. You live, move. You move in me. You breathe in me. 
you're no longer human being only, but you're also a Christ. No, read your Bible. In him we live, move, and have our being. We are also his offspring. Are you following what I'm saying? So he's asking you, why then do you separate yourself from me through your song? The songs you worship, you should be worshiping or singing are supposed to be songs that reconcile you to me. Things like, I am a friend of God. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> ah, he calls me friend. <laughs> Those are songs. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, somebody say, but it's a song. Oh, yes, but it's a state that literally separates a man from his God through your worship. Through your worship. So then, what, what are those times when I've had visions of Jesus? Those are called encounters. They're not called visitations. There's a difference. Those are called encounters, not visitations. Jesus does not visit a new creature anymore. He's reconciled to the new creature. He lives in the new creature. He functions in the new creature. That's why he speaks of Christ dwelling in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. See, it's the revelation of that love that roots and grounds you. That you might know the depth, the breadth, the width, the height of God's love. And once you understand that height, he says that you might be a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself because you carry the richest measure of his presence. Oh, did I leave you? Okay, let's open it. Let's read it. Let's read it. He says, May Christ through your faith, May Christ through your faith. You see that? May Christ, this is important for you to understand. May Christ through your faith. In other words, it's important for you to believe this. It's important, for, I can't emphasize this enough. It's important for you to believe it. May Christ through your faith actually. Listen, dwell, settle down, uh -huh, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. In other words, anybody who has an indwelling experience of the Christ, it's somebody who has received it by faith. If you think that Jesus dwells in you permanently, he does. If you believe it. If you think that Jesus visits you, you're in trouble when he doesn't visit or when he bypasses you. That is why Christians die unnecessarily. Because by the time Jesus is coming, he's already in my house. We're still talking. And so I'm not done with you yet. He needs to get to you. You see, <laughs> did somebody get the joke? <laughs> Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. I believe that Jesus dwells in me 24-7. Every moment of my life. Now listen, he continues to say, May you, may you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. It's a revelation of that love that affirms his presence in our lives. And he continues to say that you may have the power, listen, and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, which is the breadth, the length, the height, and depth of it. That you may really come, verses 19, to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God. Listen, that you may be filled in all your being and to all the fullness of God. In bracket, it says that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Woo! Did you get that? It's possible to be filled and flooded with God himself that you'll become or that you'll carry the richest measure of God's presence in your body and you're walking through Brisbane with the richest measure of God's presence you're walking through Queensland with the richest measure with filled with all the fullness of God listen 
Some of you think that revival is fire falling from heaven. That revival is fire coming out of us. When we get this thing, when we preach it until we get it fully, and every member has the ability to display and demonstrate God fully. We won't need to call them in our churches. They will come. Because when they need the presence of God, they don't even need to look for Pastor Adams. They look for you. That's revival. They don't need to look for a special man of God. No. This is the gospel that liberates men. 